So we're here at the Qualcomm booth, and uh, who are you? Hi, I'm Mark Shedd, Director of Marketing for Snapdragon. Uh, I'm basically uh, introducing the Snapdragon 820 uh, at the show. We actually introduced this uh, on Monday. It's uh, the first uh, uh, custom core that we've introduced in the 800 tier um, uh, recently, and that's uh, introducing our Cryo CPU. Uh, which is a 64-bit uh, uh, custom uh, design. It's basically part of our heterogeneous uh, computing story, uh, and uh, that's part of our new uh, 800 tier. So this is uh, building on, to, uh, on top of what you were doing with Crate before, but now 64-bit. It's the next generation custom uh, CPU, and yes, it's uh, going to be replacing Crate, and uh, that's going to be also uh, uh, going to be optimized for the new Xeroth platform, which is actually our uh, uh, platform that's designed for uh, cognitive uh, computing, which is going to be really tapping into our new CPU, GPU, and DSP um, uh, customized uh, design. Cognitive computing. So uh, you're doing a heterogeneous, and you are kind of uh, you were doing a bunch of the heterogeneous before already with the crate, right? And now you're doing like the next level of that. We've been doing uh, heterogeneous computing for for quite a while, but now we're basically upping the computing power uh, and uh, in, increasing the integrated level of the CPU, GPU, and DSP. And uh, the uh, cognitive capability is going to be allowing the uh, the phone actually to be doing a lot of the thinking for you uh, for applications like camera, uh, connectivity, and uh, speech and audio. You're going to be able to see the phone starting to do some uh, application capabilities that will take a lot of the uh, simple tasks like setting up camera settings, uh, connecting to the Wi-Fi or the uh, for the or the uh, uh, network for you instead of having to do those tasks on your own. This is uh, sounds pretty awesome. It's like the uh, kind of like AI stuff. It's the next uh, smart, the smart smartphone. Yeah, it is. Uh, but what's different on uh, our stuff is that it's all done on device. It's, it doesn't have to rely on the cloud to do it uh, because we've now got the computing power on the actual smartphone itself. So uh, did you say how soon? It's going to be in the second half of the year. Uh, we're going to be sampling the devices, so we should be seeing devices uh, either at the uh, end of the year or early next. Did you announce a round of cores, or uh, did you say which GPU name goes with that? Or No, we haven't announced any other uh, details on that device. So uh, right here behind you, you have some awesome demos. This is uh, 810, right? Yeah, these are all uh, 810-based. Uh, this is using our uh, uh, mobile de uh, development platform, and that's basically showing 4K in action. These people are actually using this to uh, yeah. do live painting. This is live what, sorry? Live painting. Live painting. In 4K. In 4K. Uh, <clears throat> on here, we're actually using uh, H.265. Yeah. So this is uh, HEVC, yeah. uh, high efficiency uh, 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 encoding for video. So it's like half the bit rate? Half the bit rate so and... Uh, uh, basically twice the uh, um, uh, quality twice the uh, twice the quality at half the bit rate well wow. uh, this is uh, our uh, secure content storage um, association uh, development basically shows the ability that we can download secure content onto um, these platforms uh, and in 4K. So this basically is the ability to um, <clears throat> deploy uh, really high quality content on uh, tablets and smartphones. This basically is a streaming uh, uh, content. So we're streaming 4K content down to mobile devices over LTE. So this is really uh, interesting because you're using a 150 megabit per second LTE connection to actually stream 4K content. But you just uh, you compress it all to H.265. So it's is compressed. You you just need 15 megabit of stable connection. That's right. You have 4K. That's right. It's, it's awesome. really amazing. Let's go around here. So over here we've got a, a lot of our graphics and uh, uh, capability. With the Adreno 430 that's in the uh, yes. Snapdragon 810, we've got uh, customized games. Uh, we've got the ability to do uh, a tremendous amount of uh, uh, <clears throat> custom sh customized shading. Is this a real person? No, this is uh, basically uh, a, a graphics uh, figure that we've customized to show toning and um, yeah. Mark, can you uh, yeah show us how to do a little bit of editing here? So this shows the ability to do customized graphic toning and shading. 
which is something that the 810 uh, is really good at because it's got the Adreno 430. Yeah. Right. Oh, this is uh, this is an action-packed game we're looking at. Yeah. Modern Combat 5 from Game Loft. What is this? This is uh, Modern Combat 5. It's a, a new title from Game Loft. Is that the the highest end Android game in the world, or something it's like that? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. There's a lot of graphic features. The environments are done very well, and. Uh, the, the combat action as well is uh, nicely done. The interface is, uh, is this, what you'd expect. Is this as good as uh, PlayStation 3 gaming? What are we looking at? Uh, you're putting me on, on camera here for a PlayStation 3 yeah. question. I don't want to address uh, that. But, but we're getting it's, at... We're it's, getting you're at, getting very close to console we get, quality. We're getting very close to... This is... It can also already do it, but pretty soon people could... You, you could say it's kind of like replacing the home console market, right? What's what's amazing is, you know, we're combining high quality gaming and 4K screens. Uh, this this uh, tablet actually has a 4K screen on it, and we, when you combine the two, you're getting uh, amazing quality graphics and, and capabilities to take portably. So this is, uh, this is really getting to the point where you can take your uh, PlayStation with you. Yeah. Cool. You can just shoot people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Exactly. Cool. And right. uh, let, let's go around. So you have a bunch of stuff at the booth. Yep. And uh, so over here, we're showing a lot of our, our latest uh, capabilities for uh, for for LTE and um, uh, wireless. What we're really concentrating on is our latest um, capabilities. We've done um, a lot of things in uh, LTE. We've advanced LTE from CAT4 to CAT6 to CAT9, and now CAT11 we've even demonstrated up to 600 megabits uh, per second download. So this is actually... CAT11 sounds crazy. Yes. So, uh, so here we, we're talking CAT9. CAT yeah, uh, CAT9 is uh, 450 megabytes uh, per second. Maybe you guys can uh, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the CAT9 capabilities that, uh, that we're able to show. So we're currently uh, uh, aggregating three carriers. This is a commercial and KT network. Uh, we're aggregating three carriers from band 138. Uh, we're also with this uh, 810 Snapdragon uh, processor, we're able to uh, offer uh, carriers and vendors 180 band combinations, and that will help them in their fragmented spectrum, so they can aggregate successfully their fragmented spectrum. We can uh, reach throughputs. I can start the throughput for uh, for a maximum so, throughput. Well, is this a real demo? What's, this is what's a real demo here? with Ericsson e Note Bs. And going through what? Uh, through the phone? Going through the phone. We're this speaking. phone here? Yeah. No, no, no. You can't. Uh, this is the phone. It's connected. This one is? Yes, this is the one streaming 4K video. Yeah. And downloading 450 megabits yeah. per second. For. 50 megabits per second. 450 yes. megabits per second. Yeah. 60 of them is just the 4K video. Does that mean Cat9 is on the market? Yes. This I mean, the, your, your 810 is Cat9? Yes, this is a commercial device in KT network. The Flex 2? Yeah, G Flex 2. And uh, um, so now we just need a carrier, right? Yes, I mean, KT is also supporting. KT is Korea? Yeah, Korea Telecom. Pretty awesome. Yeah. But it doesn't go all the way to, to 600, does it? No, not not yet. Not yet. Um, we'll see that uh, fairly soon. Yeah. Six uh, hundred's the the next step. Uh, Cat eleven. Maybe you guys could uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on with uh, Cat eleven. This is a three carrier aggregation with an uh, FDD with twenty megahertz each cell. So basically, that gives you an aggregated bandwidth of sixty mega, sixty megahertz. What we are using here is instead of sixty four quam, which is used on Cat nine, we are using two fifty six quam. Which yeah. directly gives you 33% gain in throughput. From 450 Mbps, we are able to get to 600 Mbps. We see small cells as a use case where this can be leveraged. At the growing interest in small cells, this technology can be paired with it to really make an impact. What is this? This is a working prototype. That, yeah. This is a working prototype that we have built. This is a phone. It's a proof. It, it's basically a. It doesn't have a display. No, it's it's not a it's not a commercial phone. Yeah. It is basically a prototype device, and uh, it is working with the Ericsson network, which is actually supporting the 256 core on three cells, which is getting you to about 587 Mbps, close to the Cat 11 600 Mbps. 600 megabits. Yes. So to to achieve this, you have to combine cells. Yes. You have Three. This is one way of doing it with three carriers being aggregated. And it's different from Cat9 that they also yes. combine cells? Or they they combine three cells. They also? With 20 megahertz each cell. Yeah. The difference here is the 256 quam modulation, which is getting you the 33% extra 
bump in the throughput. So this kind of bandwidth will be possible only when there is small cells or not necessarily only when there's small cells? So small cells is the probably the first use user scenario that we see this applicable to. But there is no reason it cannot be used in macro cells. So that's pretty awesome. That's cool. Does it work on the Google Project Balloon? I'm joking. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Cool. Okay, thanks. thanks. So uh, that's uh, that's pretty cool. And you're showing uh, LTE. You're showing uh, graphics. There's a lot going on in Wi-Fi as well. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of uh, multi-user MIMO yeah? as well. Uh, down this way. Uh, a lot of um, uh, the Wi-Fi networks are actually uh, expanding uh, quite rapidly as well, both in terms of uh, speed and in terms of reliability. Um, so multi-user MIMO is uh, kind of the next step, and uh, that's basically where we're doing multi-gigabit uh, uh, type of Wi-Fi. So um, multi-gigabit Wi-Fi. This is real Wi-Fi spectrum. Yeah, yeah. So this is basically taking the existing, um, you know, uh, uh, spectrum and taking uh, 60 uh, gigahertz. Uh, and using it uh, to basically go up to uh, 600 uh, megabits uh, per second uh, speeds. So this is a really exciting next generation Wi-Fi. Cool. What, do, what does Gizmodo said? Good news and slow ultra-wide public Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah. Is this is still AC? This is AC. Uh, this is basically where we introduce uh, multi-user uh, MIMO. So we use multi-channel to uh, get rid of the uh, interference. Um, and then uh, AD comes in at uh, uh, 60 megahertz and actually uh, uh, introduces new uh, spectrum to actually do give uh, AD. So that's where you get a higher speed. 60, giga 60 gigahertz is not the normal Wi-Fi, right? Uh, so the new that's, new the new, that's the new spectrum. So this unlicensed open spectrum over there? Correct. And you yeah. also use that together with the Wi-Fi spectrum? Yeah, so you basically start uh, start to increment the uh, speeds, in increment the available spectrum. What about the, the range of of 60 gigahertz is pretty good also or it need to be closer maybe um, is it smaller cell smaller <laughs> Or maybe not. So it's probably good to yeah. get, uh, one of the guys that's here that uh, can talk about it. And uh, you're showing some demos in the back of uh, uh, reference. Right. AC and the AD over there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So that's cool. And small cells technology, <coughs> LTE direct. And if you go just around around here. Some of the more exciting stuff um, actually is over here with uh, in the home. There's a tremendous amount of innovation coming uh, in the home. And uh, this is where the uh, Ultron Alliance has done a lot of work. And, uh, everything from refrigerators to light bulbs, uh, this is where a lot of the action is happening. So uh, <clears throat> basically, if you look at um, some of the things that uh, you can do in the home, uh, it's pretty exciting. So uh, if you open up the refrigerator, for example, um, you can actually connect it. Uh, your light bulb knows that uh, you've actually been in the refrigerator um, <clears throat> and you uh, can actually control uh, lights and iOS uh, device back to uh, that actually uh, shows that you've been somewhere, the refrigerator, uh, another room. You can control all the lighting in your house uh, and all of the devices. You don't have to go back to a hub. All of the devices are just aware of each other. So this is uh, an exciting next step for home automation. So um, Qualcomm is totally into the Internet of Things and, and uh, have solution right there. Yeah. Uh, in the light bulbs, there's a small chip that uh, Qualcomm is a part of. And we've worked uh, to network all of these uh, small chips together. Are they some of them Cortex-M something? Uh, they could be. They could. Like I'm, this small, smaller processors right there. Yeah. And uh, like kind of like the the gateway could be the smartphone also. So you, you control stuff from your smartphone. Yeah. The smartphone basically can uh, can be part of that network. Yep. Cool. And there's a bunch of people there looking at a cool uh, demo over there. That has to do with um, VR and augmented reality. Yes. And that's our Vuforia platform, yeah. uh, which basically is an open uh, yeah. standard. Uh, yeah. Develop off of um, the consume in, zoom yeah. out, um, and as you continue this process, you acquire a 3D model of the scene. Cool. So it just records the world in 3D. This is kind of like uh, what I imagine could be the future of Android. Yeah, absolutely. 
where uh, where there's a 3D recognition instant from the phone. Yeah, uh, and, and you start to record your uh, entire world in 3D, and you can use it, uh, edit it uh, later, and uh, and basically use applications to uh, to d develop um, you know ways to interact uh, with uh, the the mapping that you do. What do you do with the car? So this is basically uh, we're using Snapdragon and um, um, applying it to automotive, so that you can use uh, Snapdragon uh, both application processor and modem to augment the, DAG, uh, the, the dashboard. So um, in, inside the, there? Yeah, so you can see the dashboard basically yeah. being controlled by a Snapdragon chip uh, and displaying the graphics. And behind the seats you can see the uh, in-dash uh, in uh, entertainment system basically being driven by uh, the application process. Are you showing, that, uh, are there any cars shipping with Snapdragon and dashboard uh, already? Not yet. These are all prototypes, but uh, we'll be seeing it uh, within the next few years. Uh, you know, uh, systems that are basically so being driven uh, across a, a lot of different cars. What is LTE Direct? It allows uh, LTE in uh, mm -hmm. uh, the unlicensed spectrum to be uh, cut through uh, so that uh, phones can talk to each other directly instead of having to go LTE through the network. LTE Direct is clearly at the intersection of people and devices. Is this Our the unlicensed, like the TV spectrum? Are we talking about 700 megahertz or other ones, it's like 60 gigahertz? We're seeing it's a uh, LTE spectrum that uh, is basically being uh, unlicensed, uh, so it's not carrier uh, uh, licensed, so right. it's uh, directly available. Oh. Let's just go around here. Yeah. Cause there's a cool demo around here of the So here you're also showing some uh, pretty futuristic uh can we do a video with you? So you, you're showing uh, uh, Man Mantis Vision. Yeah. Yeah, you're showing some uh, using the Qualcomm processor. But currently in 2D, you can only put. Yeah. We're using Snapdragon 801 on this uh, on this platform. Of course, we're working on uh, an 810 as well. Soon for a second. Sorry. I need to picture that. So generally, we have uh, 8 inch tablet running Snapdragon 801. Uh, we have two cameras here. Yeah. This is uh, the ordinary uh, 13 megapixel color camera of the tablet. This is near infrared camera and near infrared source of light. So we take a picture of this cow, for example. So this is the infrared, and this is the color channel, and together, this is 3D. In life. Cool. So I can go around this cow puppet and scan. You're scanning the cow? Yeah, 360 coverage. And then it will merge and all now, that? Yes, everything will be merged. So this is 801. Uh, what about 8010? What's going to be the performance in that for your solution? Well, this is a 64 bit platform. The 810 we have. Much higher frame rate, much higher capabilities. So right now, what frame rate are you doing? This system runs on 15, 15? FPS. And with the 810, the what, do you, what do you think it's going to do? Well, we already have a system that lab works on 25 and 30 FPS. So uh, it means... We can uh, go up to 60 FPS. Faster scanning of the world, and it means uh, higher quality of also? Yeah, but this is... Scanning, scanning is one thing. Let, let's talk about additional uh, additional uh, capabilities of this system. For example, uh, I, I took a, a scan of this guy, okay, and now, for example, I can print his mask. But think about the fact that I have hundreds of thousands of measurement points of this guy's face. Now, imagine security applications that you look at the phone and the phone recognizes you instantly. Uh, for example, that I can sense emotions, like when you're scared watching a movie, when you uh, smile, when you blink nervously, everything can be learned by the system. But let's see something, something more, completely different uh, uh, application, we call it 3D Pop. We have this, sorry, this guy dancing here, okay? And this is a 2D movie. Yeah. But I can extract the guy out of the 2D movie 
So imagine you sit at home and you're watching a movie and you decided you want to see the actress or the actor from a different angle. You want to be the director of that movie. So you now you can do that. And this is no post-production studio, no green room, nothing, just an ordinary tablet. And this, and this is just your early uh, uh, development platform, right? Uh, Everything can be done with the Gear VR or similar application as well. And this is something that uh, is going to be optimized, improved, and with 810, sure. and it's going to be uh, completely this is insane. A, this is a development platform. We're releasing the uh, software SDK to the public. Uh, you can buy this platform today and start develop your own application based on that. Um, and we let the, we crowdsourcing the ideas of how to make cool stuff using 3D in real time. Cool, that's awesome. Got a, so got a couple of other uh, yeah. really interesting things. Yeah. Uh, we, at the show, we introduced a, um, a fingerprint sensor. It's a 3D sensor that uh, basically will uh, rev help revolutionize uh, fingerprint sensing uh, for Android. Uh, also, can uh, help explain it a bit? Yeah, sure. So what you see here is an so ultrasonic sensor. Yes. Ultrasonic. Yes. So it means that it's uh, based on uh, uh, ultrasound, sound waves. So it seems like uh, medical devices. You see here, uh, when you put your finger, it will capture the fingerprint. Now the nice thing is it's going not just to the surface of the finger, but deep into the finger. So you can Whoa. get a 3D image. And this allows you to capture or allows the device to capture your fingerprint even if you have water or you have any dirt on your finger, wow. it will still work, unlike uh, capacitive. Work. And how is it reliable and fast? Yeah, it is. So is you it can see it here. So do you see? You can see it. I just don't, uh, I put just half so of my sensor, finger because I don't want my finger to be public. Who's making this sensor? So the sensor is made by uh, uh, one of our partners. But making cool. it and it's a Qualcomm technology. How soon is it everywhere? In the uh, phones? It's going to be in phones at the uh, end of this year. Cool. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah. One last thing. Uh, we announced our Xeroth platform, which is our cognitive platform we talked about before. And uh, we've got some uh, really cool demos here. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping we might uh, be able to get a couple of demos of uh, our Xeroth platform. Um, we've got uh, scene detect, uh, we've got uh, uh, also uh, face detect. And uh, we've got some uh, uh, handwriting uh, detection. Um, maybe we can go through some. All right. Um. All this runs uh, on a local chip, so there's no data plan needed. There's no images transferred to the to the cloud. Uh, no privacy issues, and it's cognitive uh, technology. The chips try to mimic the human brain. They, by doing so, they're able to recognize outdoor, sky, architecture, no people, visible trees. Wow. Cats? No. It cats. can recognize cats. It can recognize cats. Hand. Hand. Whoa. Watch. So, uh, we're talking about uh, machine learning? Yes. This is uh, the future of... Uh, Everything. <laughs> how, 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 this, which should be, this is 810, right? These are demonstrations on the 810, and uh, we're actually going to be optimizing this uh, further for the 820. So, which is the real applications people can do with this? What is, what is going to, how the, is it going to help Android be better? Um, the camera knows in advance that it's about to take a picture of a child, so then the settings of the camera should be different than if you want to take a picture of uh, a sunset. So the technology will help us take better pictures. But also, uh, I have on my mobile phone, I have 9,000 images. And every new picture that I take today is shoot and forget. I'm pretty sure I will never be able to take to find my pictures back again in future. Now this technology can scan my entire, really? uh, my entire gallery. And it can find all the pictures taken in the mountains. Take and all this is locally done on the chip, no in, no cloud. No cloud. But you could use the cloud too. Or? You but could you could very easily use the the cloud, but by doing everything on the device, it makes it more uh, res highly responsive. It also uh, makes it more secure. So those are some advantages of doing uh, on device processing. And uh, again, uh, that's uh, you know on the 810, and we're going opt to further optimize it on the 820. Yeah. What is this? Another example is uh, 
hand writing recognition. So, what, is it just going to say that it's handwriting or is it actually going to understand the text? Let's see what it is. Currently, it's analyzing it. And now. You're not going to recognize it, I don't think so. Oh. Already? Yes. Whoa! Whoa! It recognizes handwriting, but it's not going to recognize my handwriting, I don't think so. You want to try it? I don't think it's going to work. We can try it. Let's try it. Yeah, it is. No, no, wait, 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 wait. You have to write yeah. carefully in the middle in mm. English, and you have to leave white borders around it. What's the name of your channel? Arm devices. Let's try. Alright, so this is uh, difficult enough because yes, it's uh, two times. <laughs> yeah. Let's try. I'm, uh, I don't believe it, but let's see. Yeah, one second. And it's all done luckily. On device. On, On the device. device. I don't think so, you're not going to be able to. Whoa! Ah, 10, okay. That's, yeah, ten, 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 10, 10 is better. That's, ten. Yeah, that's a good, good let, 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 me, let me try again. No, that's a, that's One okay. more time. That was amazing. You got awesome and cool. This has a huge... Uh, yeah. It has huge educational possibilities right here. Uh, you can you can have the kids do handwriting again. and kind of like recognize it. It'll even teach some adults how to write again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, what do you think about you know uh, helping blind people navigate into the world? Is possible? Of course. The uh, yeah. there's potential in there. Well, it can recognize indoor or outdoor. But if I'm if I if I'm blind, I know that you know just by sensing, but we can, for instance, recognize a, a door, swimming pool. A door, swimming pool. Swimming pool. I, yeah, I think if I'm blind, I want to know if Dangerous there's... situations. Uh, yeah, cars yeah. coming or... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Cool. So, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I just want to check out the smartwatch also, the smartwatch area. Okay. Because uh, basically all, this, all the Android wear, they're all using Qualcomm. Yeah, Most and of them right now. probably the coolest one that just got added was the uh, LG uh, G Watch, and uh, that's actually got. Um, yeah, here it is. It's uh, got uh, this one has LTE in it. Um, LTE built in, built in with so SIM card. It's uh, basically a watch with LTE. Um, it uh, doesn't uh, need a SIM card. Uh, it, you can uh, actually uh, integrate it in so that uh, you can have um, it, you know uh, uh, integrated. So what you have is extremely long battery life because uh, it's got a Snapdragon 400 in it. Uh, nice. And that allows you to basically have... Is it Android uh, Wear or is it WebOS? It, uh, uh, it, I believe that it's uh, WebOS. Uh, <laughs> yeah. this but it could be Android if it could support very, very uh, easily. Yeah. LTE. And there are, yeah. Otherwise all these are Android Wear and yes. everybody's using a, a Qualcomm for that. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. that's cool. And uh, maybe soon you'll be in... Uh, uh, smart glass. This is actually a, a Snapdragon 805. Um, so, and smart glass. This gives you uh, with the Snapdragon 800 or uh, Snapdragon 805. It gives you both the GPU for the advanced um, uh, vision and graphics that you need for the uh, projection, uh, as well as the um, uh, processing power for the, uh, the overall uh, vision. Cool. So I hope that uh, very soon we'll see just. Kind of like you know Google Glass everywhere and uh, powered by Qualcomm. But uh, so thanks a lot for the tour. Thanks Thank for you. showing all this. Thanks a lot. It's pretty cool. It.